Hi guys, this is Miss Davis, and today I'm going to be going over how to use the race strategy to answer constructed response questions. This is going to help you for class on Tuesday, January 13th, because you are going to have to write your very own constructed response. If you recall um, today, earlier today, on January 6th, we talked about supporting and developing topics. And part of that was identifying supporting sentences within a text. Supporting sentences support the main idea of the paragraph. Supporting sentences should contain relevant details that develop and explain the main idea. And many of you told me in class today that what it means to be relevant is that it has to do with the topic or it has to do with the main idea. So it has to be related to the point that you're trying to make or the topic that you're writing about. So you can't have something completely off the wall and random included in your paragraph. Um, it has to be relevant. So if you were writing a paragraph about um, how birds migrate south during the winter, it would be completely irrelevant to have some facts about peanuts in that paragraph, right? That doesn't make sense. It's not related. It's not relevant. It shouldn't be there. Okay, so that's what relevant means. And you do want to always have supporting facts and details. All right, and we read this together during class. It is also included in this K-mail. I'm providing a link and the file itself. So you will need to reread this. It's a very short, barely two page um, article. Um, so it won't take too long to reread it. Um, as we read during class, we were looking for supporting details or, or those supporting sentences that the author provided in the article. Now, if you remember, the author kind of was giving two opposing viewpoints, two different arguments about plastic bags and whether they were good or bad. Um, and we actually spent some time identifying some of those supporting details that the author provided. You guys were able to give me three supporting details that supported the idea that plastic bags are just the worst, they're bad, they're no good. Okay, And then the author also made the argument that plastic bags aren't all bad um, and provided some supporting details and you guys were also able to help me identify um, three details for that argument. So that article was chock full of um, supporting details and it was well developed. So next week on January 13th during class you will be answering the following question with a short constructed response. What do you think? Should we ban plastic bags? Use evidence from the article to support each side of the debate. Okay, and we're going to be referring back to this article. That's why I want you guys to reread it. Now, some of you might be like, uh, okay, how do I write a constructed response? Maybe you haven't written one in a while. I promise you, you've written one at some point in your life. Um, but a constructed response is a short answer, okay? We're not writing essays here. We're writing um, short responses to questions. Now, that doesn't mean that they're one-word answers. They're, con they're well constructed, okay? They fully answer the question, and they give examples, and they're wonderful, okay? Just keep in mind as we go through this that it's not an essay, though, because there are differences between writing a constructed response and an essay. All right, so the letters that we'll be using to learn the strategy are R-A-C-E, or RACE. Um, and this is an acronym, so each letter stands for a step that you will use to write a constructed response. So starting with the R, when you're faced with a constructed response question, the first thing you want to do is restate the question. You use the question stem to write a topic sentence. Now, I've had a lot of middle schoolers in the past, I know this won't be you guys, but in the past I've had some that when they see restate the question, they write down a 
a question as their first sentence in their response. Now, what do you think? Think about it. Do you think that's good, strong writing? No, no. Um, you do not want to start your constructed response with a question. When I say restate the question, I mean in the form of a declarative statement. So you might use some of the wording, that's what the stem means, some of the wording from the question to write your sentence, but you're not just flat out restating the question as is. You have to turn it into a declarative sentence, one with a period, a statement, okay? So um, the A stands for answer, and you do need to make sure that you answer all parts of the question. Some questions are tricky, and there are two questions. And when that happens, you need to make sure that you realize there's more than one question being asked and that you address each question fully, okay, in its own paragraph. Um, C is very, very important. C stands for cite evidence from the text. You must quote the text. You will use evidence-based terms to begin your sentences. This is so important, and this is where really, um, when we were working with I, last week with identifying those supporting details that the author provided, um, this is where that comes in, because you're going to need to pull out those supporting details. That's what we mean by evidence. You're pulling things out directly from the text, and you're quoting them in your response, in your answer, as evidence. Okay, you're using it as evidence to support your answer. Um, and you will go over what some evidence-based terms are. Um, that's a really good way to begin your sentences when you're citing evidence from the text. The last letter in race is E, and that stands for explain and extend. Um, and remember guys, as I said, today I'm not teaching you how to write an essay. Essays are different. You should know with essays um, that in your conclusion, you don't want to introduce any new information, okay? But we're not doing that today. This is just a short paragraph, one paragraph answer. So the E um, in race stands for explain and extend. And that means that you are explaining how this evidence supports your answer. And you may give new examples from connections that you've made with the topic. So in this case, the E is, is kind of helping you to tie it all together, put a nice, neat, little, pretty bow on top, um, really solidifying your answer, okay? And maybe using a personal connection to drive it home, okay? Let's explain and extend. You're extending it. Um, a little bit further, maybe with something personal. So to go through this with a different example, remember we're going to be using the plastic bag debate article, but um, with a completely different example to kind of go through these four steps, um, we're using the following question. So pretend like you read an article about bullying and you're using this article to answer this constructed response question. Here's the question. What are some ways students can help to stop bullying in their school? What's the first thing you want to do? R. This means to turn the question into a statement. Use words from the question stem in your statement. Think about it. Am I just writing a question? Am I just rewriting the question? I'm just writing this again? No, 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 no. Here's what this might look like. Okay, so when I'm faced with that question, this is a great statement, great first sentence, or two sentences. Bullying is a huge problem in many schools. There are several steps students can take to help stop this problem in their own school. Look how many words that were directly pulled from the sentence in these two topic sentences. Bullying students stop school, okay? That's a very strong um, beginning to this constructed response. Or you could also put it into one sentence. I'm gonna scroll down so you can see. You could say, there are several things students can do to help stop bullying in their school. 
This is a good statement as well. Um, I think that topic sentences or the, the R step can be done in one sentence if, if you're careful about it. And if you're, you get really good at writing topic sentences, it's definitely doable. Um, notice there are still a lot of words that are pulled from the question there. Um, the only thing is this top statement explains that bullying is a huge problem in many schools. This one, it's kind of implied, but implied that it's a problem, but they don't come right out and say that. Okay, so both of those are, are good acceptable statements. Now the A, remember the A stands for answer the question and make sure that you answer all parts of the question. Some questions do have more than one part, so you gotta be careful. So using the example question, um, an answer might look like after you do the topic sentence, you restate the question, one thing students can do is to participate in a school-wide effort committed to speaking out against bullying. Okay, so that completely answers the question. Um, it gives an answer. The question was, what can students do to, to stop bullying? This is one solid thing that they could do. There's an answer. Um, then you want to cite evidence. Step three is see cite evidence. This means you're looking back at the text and finding specific examples that support your answer. Okay, so if you said one thing students can do is to participate, uh, participate in a school-wide effort against bullying, here's something that the author said that supports that idea. You quote the text here. According to the author, research has shown that students who participate in anti-bullying programs in their schools are more likely to have empathy for students who experience bullying. Okay, so um, that was in the article and it's very important, this part that's underlined in red, it's very important that in your writing you use phrases like this. These are called evidence-based terms and they're very good for beginning um, where you're citing evidence from the text you're introducing and you're explaining, this came right from the text, okay? So according to the author is one of those evidence-based terms. And the last step, explain and extend. This is the E in race. You will explain how this evidence supports your answer. You can use your own background knowledge and connections you made from your own experience. One example of this is a poster contest my school had. The topic was stand up to bullies. The contest seemed to make students really think about how hurtful bullying can be. Um, so this last, or these last two sentences, um, the, the person who wrote this constructed response is using their own personal experience. Okay, they're using connections to really drive this home. Okay, they answered the question they cited something from the text, and now they're extending it even more. They're tying it all together by saying, I know that things like this work because we did it at my school. And it really did make students think, okay? So um, putting it all together, make sure that you're checking for conventions, those simple things like spelling, punctuation, capitalization, grammar, um, edit before you say you're done. Never just write something and say, okay, I'm good. Don't be lazy. Okay, go over it and check. So looking at it all together, bullying is a huge problem in many schools. There are several steps students can take to help stop this problem in their own school. One thing students can do is to participate in a school-wide effort committed to speaking out against bullying. According to the author, research has shown that students who participate in anti-bullying programs in their schools are more likely to have empathy for students who experience bullying. One example of this is a poster contest my school had. The contest seemed to make students really think about how hurtful bullying can be. Okay, one paragraph completely answers the question. So we are going to be using the race strategy on Tuesday, January 13th to answer this question. You will see this question again in class. So before class, you do not need to have the answer before class. You simply need to reread the article, take notes of details, and rewatch the video. We are out of time. Bye, guys. I'll see you Tuesday.